Ah, chestnuts roasting on an open fire. Oh, hello there. Welcome to Everyday Gourmet. As you can see, I've got some roasted chestnuts here, and we're gonna put these into our roasted sweet potato and chestnut bisque. All right, let's get down to these chestnuts. So to roast them, I put them on the sheet pan and cut an X in the top of them and roasted them in a 425 degree oven for about 15 minutes or until their skin was peeling back like this. And now I'm just gonna come here and peel off that brown part and put it in my trash bowl here and get all that off. It's kind of tough sometimes. You wanna do this while they're still hot because the skin won't be quite so attached. And it comes off beautifully like that. You got this nice little roasted chestnut. I can put them all here and I'm gonna chop them up so we can add them to our bisque. Now to create the base of our soup, we're gonna use a mirepoix. Now what mirepoix is, is a one to one to one ratio of onions, celery, and carrots that I've chopped into a quarter inch dice. And I'm gonna add those to a pan that's been preheated with some olive oil. Now once he's been cooking a little while, I'm gonna make sure to stir them and get them all around. And now I'm gonna let them cook on the stove at about medium heat for 20 minutes or until they get nice and golden brown. And now for the sweet potatoes. Now I know most people think of sweet potatoes as a very, well, sweet dish at Thanksgiving, covered in marshmallows and brown sugar and all that stuff. But we're gonna use them in a slightly more savory application today. Um, and to cook them, I uh, put them on a roasting pan like you see right here, um, poked a bunch of holes in them, and then roasted them in a 400 degree oven for about 50 to 60 minutes or until the skin is nice and crispy and the flesh inside is very tender. Then I put on my cutting board and run my knife down the center. You can see how nice and tender that flesh is and how beautifully yellow. I'm gonna peel back the skin a little bit and I'm actually gonna mash them in the skins so I don't have to use another bowl. So I'm just gonna take up my big old fork here, get in there and mash up this beautiful, beautiful sweet potato flesh that's gonna make this soup brightly colored and have this great flavor. All right, I'm just gonna do the rest of the ones I've got here and I'm gonna add them to my soup. So now that our mirepoix is nice and brown, I'm gonna come over here and grab a couple more ingredients that are really gonna to add to the flavor of the sweet potato and the chestnut. And first up is a teaspoon of red pepper flakes that is gonna give us some spice, a teaspoon of aniseed, which is gonna give us some sweetness and licorice flavor that really creates a depth to the soup, and then a teaspoon of uh, whole black pepper uh, corns, and those are gonna add some uh, spice and really enhance the overall flavor of the dish. In addition, I'm gonna add a teaspoon of tomato paste, and this is double concentrated tomato paste that you can get in this really cool uh, toothpaste-like container. Um, and then also a teaspoon of garlic paste. Um, and I recommend buying these sorts of containers because you can keep them for a lot longer than those tiny little cans of tomato paste and garlic paste that you might buy. So let me get these in. I'm gonna pop all five of these ingredients in and let them toast up um, as my mirepoix is finishing. All right, these spices and paste are nice and toasty brown, so I'm going to deglaze this pan with two cups of low sodium chicken broth. Now what deglazing is, woo, <laughs> going everywhere. Well, this is the exact point. Deglazing is adding a cool liquid to a hot pan and scraping all the fond, or the uh, burnt on bits in the bottom, into uh, the liquid. All right, we're getting to about two cups there. Beautiful. Now I'm just going to let this simmer for a couple of minutes to allow all the flavors to come together. All right, and now for the meat of our soup. Well, I guess it is a meat-free soup, but we're gonna use our sweet potatoes and our chestnuts now. So let's get those into this pan. 
Now this is the perfect dish uh, to cook for Thanksgiving. And I know most people normally have the, the stereotypical sweet potatoes, but I think this is a great dish you could uh, take home to your family and impress them with all that you've learned at college. Mmm, this is coming together nicely. Now I've got a couple more ingredients to add. First up, a couple of sage leaves. Now sage is the stereotypical Thanksgiving herb, and I thought it would uh, add a nice dimension to the soup, so I'm gonna add three nice sized sage leaves, and also a cup or so of apple cider. It depends on how sweet you like it, but I think a cup will do us nicely. All right, now I've got all that in there, I'm gonna give it a nice stir, and let it sit on about medium heat to simmer for 20 minutes. All right, so my soup has been simmering for about 20 minutes and all the flavors have molded together beautifully. And now I'm gonna blend it with this puppy. <laughs> this is my favorite kitchen tool. It's called an immersion blender. And you basically stick it in the pot, press go, and it blends everything for you. All right, let's give this a little test and see what it needs. Mmm, yum, that is so good. Definitely needs a little bit of cream. I think I'm gonna put a quarter of a cup in. And this will lighten our beautiful orange color and also give us some richness that'll make it great for a Thanksgiving dish. Then also, I think a little salt is needed just to bump up our flavor here. Salt is the basis of all flavor, as you probably know by now. And since we use a low sodium chicken broth, I don't mind putting a little extra salt in at the end. All right, so we've got our soup all plated up here, and we know it tastes great, but let's make sure it looks great. So first off, as our garnish, I'm gonna use a little bit of the heavy cream you used earlier. I'm gonna put a little dab in the middle there, and then I'm gonna use the back side of my spoon to fan it out, to make a really pretty design. You kind of swirl it around. Oh, that looks really great. And it creates a little bit of color variation that keeps the plate looking interesting. Next up, I'm gonna grab a little bit of brown sugar here. There we go and just lightly sprinkled it over the top. And this is gonna be a little ode to the traditional, very sweet uh, Thanksgiving sweet potatoes. And then a little sage leaf to get some greenness. And there we go. A beautiful roasted sweet potato and chestnut bisque. Have a happy Thanksgiving. It don't make no difference which way